hypothetically for his fine speech. And on behalf of Oxford at sea, to continue the case of the opposition, the Hamburg of you. Contract with. 
This is why we recognize the right of secessionist movements to secede from countries that oppress them. But we say, if you, so if you acknowledge that people should be allowed to secede from an oppressing country that's bigger, then we should also deny, give people the right to deny entry from a majority of people who come in and then vote to change all kinds of laws. Again, a kind of idea that I imagine that the proposition second page should be particularly sensitive about here. But we also say, how about this for an example? When America was divided between the slave-owning and non-slave-owning states, and they created new states, migrants from the slave-owning states, white slave owners, moved to those new states to vote in plebiscites to make them slave-owning states, so that they would have a majority of slave-owning states in the Senate. We say that this denies the right of, for example, Kansans to live in a state that bans slavery. The fact that the Kansans on your model have to just accept that a whole bunch of Texans and Mississippians can just move there for the day, voting the purposes, and force them to be a slave owning community is abhorrent. We think people should be able to choose the types of laws on which they live onto. If you deny them that right, they will deny them the right to consent to their government, and in that sense, deny them their autonomy. Go. And for that contract to be a fair contract, both parties have to consent to make it. You guys are setting up this world in which I have to just write down a bunch of rules and then wait for any old jack to come along and sign it. That's a crazy view of contracts, as I explained earlier. Second point of extension, right? Homogeneity is good. It's good for three practical reasons. These, firstly, I want to say, this passion for the like, ethno-diversity stuff that came out of the back half of the proposition. First of all, he said, like, I mean, he said that ethno-diversity is great because we like share stuff, okay? That's just an argument for trade, okay? There are millions of Italians living in Britain, but I get to eat Italian food because, you know, we can trade with them. So we don't think this is necessarily an argument, that kind of diversity argument holds. But there are very good reasons to buy that we want to have homogenous societies. Homogenous societies tend to be more willing to redistribute wealth within them. That's a sad fact of reality, ladies and gentlemen, that most people are more willing to vote for redistributionist policies if that money that they get kept gives given to someone who looks a little bit like them. That's why Sweden, Norway, and Denmark have such great redistributive programs, because they're more homogenous societies in countries than, say, Britain and the United States, generally very free market oriented. So we say there's a good reason for homogeneity if you like the poor, which you guys claim to. Second of all, we say you want to value homogeneity because this kind of policy gives you people an excuse to not give money to development aid because they're doing their bit to help people in their home country. And finally, we say homogeneity is good for democratic consolidation. When you have vastly ghettoized and, and segregated communities, these tend to produce very unstable democracies in which people vote along partisan lines. And for these reasons, ladies and gentlemen, I stand very proudly in opposition.